Welcome to the Keel Hauled Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Logan, and we've got a lot of Sea of Thieves news to cover today. So, tie yourselves to the mast and hold fast. Ahoy there, pirates. I hope you had yourselves a good week and a good weekend. I know I did. This week, we're going to be diving into some of the things that you need to know about for Twitch drops. There's a little bit of a Reaper parrot flying around, and we finally have an update on what's going on with the PlayStation 5. Your answers uh, are, are here in the FAQ that I'm going to cover today. So if you have any questions about how this is all going to work as far as like the cosmetics, crossplay, all of that, we're going to cover it. So if you're coming into Sea of Thieves for the first time as a PlayStation player, and you're curious to know about what's going on, I'm going to try and cover all of this. So that way, uh, this will be a good introductory for you to kind of understand what's going on. A lot of it is pretty, um, pretty standard, but there are some big things that I think we need to talk about. All that and more in this week's episode of Keel Hall Podcast. But before I get into any of that, I have to thank the patrons. They are the ones that are supporting this content and making sure that the bills are paid, that I am able to save up money for SOT Fest. Or no, sorry, not SOT Fest. I always just conflate the two. Fest of Legends that's going on over in Ohio this summer. I'm looking forward to it and the uh, funds that are going to be saved for the Patreon are going towards that right now. Uh, once um, that comes around, we'll probably take a look and see if there's any upgrades that I need to worry about as far as audio equipment, things like that. Um, or maybe even just some Something weird. I don't know. We might be saving for something else. But either way, uh, I appreciate the patrons. So I like to call them out every episode. So thank you to Adorable, El Cute, Balls, Blue Turtle V1, Captain Chonky, Captain Hayes, Captain Longsharts, Chateau Neuf, Super Pack, Zombie Killer, Cloud, Cosmic Johnson, Static Mir, Iron John, Davram TV, El Jefe Esteban, Fergatron, Godhammer 6, I'm Dependa now. Jorby Jorbs, J Hood, Carl Embo, Kazia the Aficionado, Cryptic Slayer, Lumpy SRQ, Evil Morpheus, Space Admiral Ors, Xbox Mike 29, Murphy Lives, Mutinous Max, Nipper Kim, Norwegian, Raja the Brave, Regis Stella the Brony Pirate, Replicated Flame, Rust Bell Kid, Scamel 666, Captain Dasm, Tommy D. TN Professor, Real Big Tuna, Big Bad Pad, Mina Fairy, Anthony N. Jr., Captain J. Rad of the Flaming Cold Sore, The Lore Chronologist, Dead Eye Dre, Heger Owl, Jeff H., Captain Duckweed, Evil Martha, Peter Miller, Ruski Doo, Thor Von Blitz, Luke Lore the Insipid Ghost, and Zam Wow. Thank you all so much for your love, for your support. It means the world to me, especially when I have some of these breaks where I miss an episode. You all are still supporting, and it, and it really does touch me that uh, you accept that and you're, you're open to that. Because uh, I know with support comes content, and content, if that doesn't come, why is there a reason to support? Well, it's because you guys really appreciate me. Uh, at least I, I'm, I'm assuming you do because you're supporting me. So I, I appreciate you for this. First on today's docket, let's talk about my absence. Um, so I have uh, missed quite a bit of episodes this year alone. That's not something that I like to do. But there is one thing that I am starting to notice and one thing that I need to address in an episode. So first off, I just want to take a few minutes to thank everyone who's been listening and supporting, joining up on the Discord, sharing uh, experiences with each other and helping each other get to places in Sea of Thieves and get things done that, you, that need help uh, from other folks. And speaking of needing help, I am needing help with myself. Um, I have been going through quite a bit in my personal life. Um, nothing that I'm going to kind of get into outside of people that already know. Uh, what this means for me, though, is that I need to try and take time to better myself. Now, whether that's through uh, taking time away from content creation or taking time away from gaming, um, I want to focus on bettering myself, both physically and mentally, because there's a lot that I'm realizing I am I'm not doing for myself. Um, it's something that I think a lot of us struggle with. Uh, self care is one of those like things that you kind of put on the back burner because you're not really 
thinking about it. There's so much other stuff to get done. And, you know, you're always trying to take advantage of the time that you have. Um, and it's important to take time for yourself to make sure that you're taking care of yourself. So uh, I'm getting some help. Um, I'm also working on taking care of my my body. I'm going to start trying to get a lot healthier. Uh, it's never been something that I've ever really concerned myself with because it's never been a problem. Um, but it is a problem that I should work on now before it gets to a point where I can't go, you know, before you, you cross the Rubicon, as they say, you know, you want to make sure that you take care of things and yourself before they get to a point where you can't do anything because otherwise you really don't have many options. Um, so I'm trying to do better about that. What that might mean in the future is, is that I might start taking weeks off to do other things, to go out, to, to touch grass. Um, it, I've, I've been touching grass recently and I'm starting to develop uh, a, a feel for it. You know, I'm starting to get accustomed to it. It doesn't itch, um, which is nice. And it's green, which is not like the sea all the time, you know, kind of prefer that blue, but you know, it's, it's different. It's like the ocean in a way, you know, if you get into a big open field, but Regardless, I've been trying to get out and do more, trying to get outside of my uh, house. I do work from home as well as make content from home. So a lot of my time is spent in one or two rooms in this small little apartment. And uh, to try and better my health, um, I'm I'm going to try and be a lot more open to going out and to doing things that I that I normally wouldn't do that I that I think would be better for just my mental health and. Um, I hope this is something that resonates with you and I hope that what this does is help kind of let you know like you should take care of yourself as well. Uh, I, I say it from time to time during the Patreon uh, call outs that uh, you know, support is always appreciated, but please take care of yourself first before you take care of the podcast. Um, the same thing goes for your everyday life. You know, take some time to really focus on taking care of yourself because if you're not taking care of yourself, um, and in my case, you deprive others of the joy that is who you are as a person. You start becoming a person that you don't want to be. And this is a kind of a wake-up call for me. It's a self-correct. I'm, I'm having to right the ship and get back on track um, with my life and uh, not let things like content creation and playing games and staying up to date with everything rule that more than other priorities in my life. Um, so thank you to all of my friends who have been helping me. Um, this is going to be a long and painful road for me, but the goal is to come out the other end with tools and um, knowledge that I don't have right now, that I'm having to admit that I don't have. Uh, it's it's hard to know what your problems are, and it's even harder to act on getting those problems fixed. So I hope you all uh, are taking care of yourselves because I care that you are taking care of yourselves as much as I, I realize that I need to take care of me as well too. Um, so please, if, uh, if, if you are out there and you need help, take time to seriously consider getting that help next on today's docket i wanted to let you all know about some drops that hopefully you got a chance to actually get um we found out that or i guess this has been a, a little known for a while but we did have twitch drops so if you are a playstation player just know that they tend to have twitch drops once a month or every other month uh and this time for april from the 5th to the 8th uh, we had four different drops. These were the Rascal Sea Dog Compass Drum and Fishing Rod. Uh, if you're familiar with the the ship sets or you're coming into this, this is a great way to start getting some free cosmetics um, to kind of like give a little variety. Since Sea of Thieves is based on cosmetics, everything in the game revolves around it. Since there are no power levels, uh, you want to make sure that you are happy with the way that you look and uh, getting free Twitch drops is a great way to kind of get some stuff from stores without actually having to farm up the gold to be able to buy those from the shopkeep. So 
kind of nice to have this out there. Um, I believe I'm still currently working on them again, like I mentioned, and you might, you might have actually noticed if you, if you did notice and you're kind of thinking, oh, Logan sounds a little different. Well, you, you might've already uh, figured that out, but if you haven't, um, the reason why I'm getting my Twitch drops so late in the week is, uh, or the weekend, I guess, is because I was out at uh, karaoke last night and um, absolutely destroyed my voice. Uh, but I got a lot of really good songs in, uh, rented a room. I love karaoke rooms because you get full access. You don't have to wait for a DJ to call your song. You're not fighting people for the same songs. You're not having to buy drinks for the sake of buying drinks just so you can sit in a bar. Um, it's just a much more uh, inviting experience. So I, I was doing that. So my voice is uh, is pretty raspy right now and uh, very tender. But I am getting my Twitch drops um, started off with uh, Mads, um, I think yesterday for a little bit, uh, jumped over to Fuzzy Bond, and now I'm watching uh, Mifu. Um, so great to have these streamers kind of help supporting content uh, creation, help supporting themselves. Um, hopefully you guys have an opportunity to support them if you are going to be getting drops from them, or at least at the very least, just kind of, you know, follow them, let them know that, hey, I really appreciate you being online streaming so that I could get these Twitch drops because it is four hours worth of content that you do need to uh, kind of, of, of accumulate to be able to get these and just make sure that your Xbox account and your Twitch account are paired so that you are able to access these uh, these drops eventually. Next up on today's docket, let's get into the meat and bones of this episode, which is going to be Sea of Thieves on PlayStation 5. Your questions have been answered. And as well as uh, some, some a little bit of, um, I don't know, maybe call it frustration or annoyance uh, with some of the, uh, the answers that we got. Um, but we have the news post that went up this week. I'm going to be reading through this and uh, kind of talking about some of the different things that you can, um, or at least I think about this and how it's going to turn out as we get closer and closer to that April 30th launch date. Um, so they announced uh, on 3rd of April, since we uh, announced in February that Sea of Thieves is coming to PlayStation 5, we've had an influx of questions about what players can expect from the experience. Today, we answer as many of those as we can. So sit tight, grab a cuppa, and take in all the juicy info regarding the ins and outs of our big PlayStation 5 release on April 30th. So first question, if I've played Sea of Thieves before, will my progress slash items transfer? Fear not, commendation collectors. When linking your PlayStation and Microsoft account, which sounds like heresy, uh, any active pirate character becomes playable in, play in the PS5 version of Sea of Thieves. This means that any progress made with that pirate, including commendations, cosmetics, Twitch drops, and accumulated gold doubloons and ancient coins will synchronize across all other platforms linked to that account. There are some caveats that we'll talk about later on. Despite the presence of a limited selection of designated platform exclusives, all additional cosmetics that players have previously acquired or brought, bought will remain accessible when playing the PlayStation 5 version of Sea of Thieves. This selection is subject to change as cosmetics become available through alternative avenues and we will keep you update all updated as this progresses there's a lot of loaded uh statements in these in this first little answer only cosmetics and items obtained through platform exclusive offers may not be fully equipped across different devices for instance the duke ship cosmetics linked to the xbox series x slash s launch won't be usable on playstation 5. similarly items like the ruby viper cosmetics or dauntless adventurer closed beta rewards exclusive to playstation pre-order campaigns won't be equipable on xbox or steam now this is this is kind of where a lot of the contention has arisen in the community as i have said in the past and on multiple shows 
a lot of uh, Sea of Thieves players were looking to get the cosmetics that were going to be offered for these pre-orders and as well as the beta closed beta access. Now, I do think that this is uh, a real bummer. It's it's a it sucks to to know that you're not going to be able to use stuff vice versa between the two consoles. But you also have to remember that this is a first party Microsoft Xbox game being made available for the first time on Sony's PlayStation. The fact that this is even happening is a real detour from what we normally expect when it comes to exclusives. And because of that, there's going to be a lot of legislation or not legislation, but uh, litigation and contracts drawn up between these two companies to determine how are they going to address promotional content because it is promotional content when the duke uh, ship cosmetics came out you had to own or be able to log into an xbox series x or s there were workarounds for this but those were workarounds that i don't believe rare or xbox had taken into account but those are exclusive to the xbox series x and s launch had you not taken the year to log in somehow to a, a series s or x or you know in this case like you know a game pass ultimate through cloud streaming uh you could not get these and uh, they have not been made available ever since which is rare and not rare the company but rare and the freak you, you you get it you understand so when i look at this i see there is precedent for this from playstation PlayStation has had many companies who have had cosmetics created exclusive for their console that cannot be used or, uh, or used by other console uh, platforms. Um, the nearest example to this that we most recently have seen that I can recall was actually when the video game Marvel's Avengers came out now that was a live service game they had a standard roster of characters that was a uh, and, and they were a third-party company no less uh that were um putting out regular content and regular characters in the mcu uh on a frequent basis now the game itself may have died but one of the things that was exclusive to playstation and this is partially because of the rights that they hold for marvel is they have exclusive video game access to Spider-Man. So when Marvel's Avengers was announced, a lot of people were interested in playing as Spider-Man. He's one of the most, if not the most, uh, famous and popular Marvel character. Uh, so when you look at what was going on there, anyone that pre-ordered through Xbox or purchased the game at any given time never was offered access to spider-man that was a console exclusive through playstation and as a result a lot of people were very upset because spider-man is exclusive to sony sony has those rights and they're able to dictate who gets access to spider-man in games now there are some uh some workarounds to this that i think marvel can dictate but a lot of this is all kind of caught up in contracts and in in licensing rights so taking something like that and and looking and seeing like okay well sony has a history of making content exclusive to their platform even if the game is third party that shows that when i look at what's going on with rare microsoft is saying okay we will go ahead and do marketing promotional material for not only the beta, but also for pre-orders. And Sony's saying that's fine, but there's no reason for people to buy this if they're able to get this content on your platform. So we want to have that content exclusive to PlayStation, so they have to buy it here. Now, I know that a lot of you who uh, are playing on Xbox or on PC may not own a PlayStation 5. And for you, the alternative here was to have someone potentially log into an account that you've created on their PS5 to be able to claim those cosmetics so that you could then go back to your original 
platform of choice, whether it be PC, Steam, uh, the Windows Store, or an Xbox, whether it's a, a One or an S or an X, and to be able to have these uh, Ruby Viper cosmetics or the Dauntless Adventurer closed beta rewards, right? Um, now that we know that these are not going to be able to be equipped on an Xbox or PC and that they are strictly console exclusive, I have seen a lot of folks, rightly so, canceling their pre-order. First off, don't pre-order if you know you're not going to, if you're not sure about a game. Don't ever buy it off a of hype. Also, always be sure that you you uh, ask for a refund prior to launch so that it's a lot easier to get that game uh, pre-order canceled because um, in my experience, companies don't often want to give money back if they don't have to. So if you did pre-order this and this is the first time that you're finding out that your cosmetics from the PlayStation version are not going to be able to be accessed f via any other platform, Please take a moment, write a little note down, sticky it onto your monitor or put it on and put it, you know, tell, tell Siri or Google to uh, remind you when you get home after the drive to go and cancel those pre-orders if that was the intent of you pre-ordering the PS5 version. Okay, got that done? Excellent. Uh, I personally will probably be keeping my PS5 uh, pre-order. Um, I would like to take part in the beta. I would like to actually have those um, Ruby uh, Viper cosmetics. And I genuinely want to try out the game um, on PlayStation. I have my PlayStation. I play it from time to time. Not too often, but from time to time. And I would be interested to kind of feel what it's like to play with a PlayStation controller that has full support. And we'll get into that later. Um, but it is kind of a bummer that this is how Sony, I believe, is conducting business. Um, because I believe that they probably would have actually had far more double dippers from the Xbox ecosystem looking to get cosmetics. And being so litigious about this, um, and in showing that they are probably wanting to try and be uh, platform exclusive with a lot of their cosmetics, which is, again, something that they've set the precedent on. And I don't imagine that this is something that Rare wants to deal with because they're just trying to make the game. And Xbox is fine with them making uh, content for Sony. Um, and Sony may be saying like, okay, well, we want exclusive cosmetics. And Xbox is like, fine, you're going to be like this. You, your people can't access the Duke cosmetics because we're, we're, we're not going to give those back out. And even if we do, we don't think that it's really cool that you're being like this. So it's probably up to lawyers in an office between Xbox and Microsoft or uh, Xbox and um, uh, PlayStation. And honestly, it, it's just harming consumers at this point because... Uh, well, it may not be harming consumers. You probably might save some money. Hey, take that money, go out to dinner, you know, go get a nice dinner. Uh, it's like 40 bucks. You could have like a decent dinner with someone uh, with that, with that $40. All right, moving on. Will there be special cosmetics to celebrate the launch of Sea of Thieves on PlayStation? For, yeah, we, we already answered this in the... Why is this a question? I always wonder why these things happen the way they do. Pirates who pre-order the PlayStation 5 will gain exclusive access to four Ruby Viper. It's, it's not four. They didn't talk about the other two guns that are... Or the other weapons that are coming in the future, but... Hey, that's okay. You get four Ruby Viper weapons and the Scarlet Storm parakeet uh which is actually pretty adorable i'm not i'm not gonna you know be upset about that additionally those participating in the ps5 closed beta will also earn the dauntless adventurer sales and title as unlockable rewards these cosmetics are classified as non-transferable and will be exclusive to players on the playstation platform again pretty sure this is because sony is just the way they are about this stupid stuff we are currently making plans for a unique sale that will be available to all players during the playstation 5 launch period this sale will commemorate the coming together of pirates across all platforms stay tuned for further details now, that's an interesting one because we don't know what that's going to look like as far as I know. I haven't seen any uh, leaks or anything about that come out. 
And it is kind of cool that there's going to be a, 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 a specific sale that will be made up for all players to celebrate the PlayStation 5 launch. Something for everyone is always better. And, uh, you know, Xbox always has that saying, um, play anywhere. You know, the more people that play, the the better we off, better off we all are. Um, and that's mostly speaking to giving access to <laughs> to people, not not more people all barreling down onto the servers to destroy them, which will in, most definitely happen. By the way, why do I need to use a Microsoft account to play on PlayStation Five? Whether you're a seasoned pirate or just starting out, you'll need to sign in with a Microsoft account to play Sea of Thieves. For those already sailing the seas, this means you can seamlessly continue your adventure and share progress across platforms. Newcomers will find that their Microsoft account keeps track of their pirate's journey, antics, and adventures, making sure that everything stays in place between game sessions. A um, little bit of a heads up there, if, uh, if you do happen to have a PC... Um, they may get into the conversation about uh, Play Anywhere, but I believe that is Xbox exclusive. That is not something that will cross over to PlayStation. But we'll, we'll keep going through these notes and these uh, FAQs and see what we find out. Curious about your progress? Well, simply log in to www.seethieves, it's not a wrestling site, .com using your Microsoft account. You'll gain instant access to a wealth of essential pirating information from checking your cosmetic inventories to keeping tabs on your hard earned currency. Every aspect of your pirating progress is at your fingertips. I'm surprised they didn't use that as a way to kind of promote the, uh, <laughs> the Emporium. Uh, furthermore, you can easily track your seasonal progress and showcase your commendations, symbolizing your daring feats on the high seas. Fashion savvy pirates can also access the. Oh, they did. Of course they did. Fashion savvy pirates can also access the Pirate Emporium, where you can browse and buy hundreds of cosmetics for your pirate and ship, the newest of which are seamlessly accessible via the website and purchasable. I'm adding this in with real actual money the pirate emporium if you don't know for playstation 5 uh users um the pirate emporium is the store that is it's it's accessible both in game and outside of game and also through the website but that is that is the quote-unquote real money store it's also how they fund uh their their progress in making the game so all the updates that in that are in sea of thieves and will continue into the future uh, are always free so you never have to worry about purchasing download or uh, uh updates so if a new content update comes um doesn't matter when it is uh it will always it will always be free uh from from what they've done in the last six years to the foreseeable future uh, moving on, how will friend invites work? The updated in-game friends list on PlayStation 5 now displays players' existing Xbox friends list alongside their PSN friends list, enabling them to easily invite from both platforms to join cross-play sessions. PlayStation users will also have the option to utilize the platform's friends list to either invite friends to their session or join their friend's session with ease. Uh, next question, jumping in. That was pretty straightforward. Um, will players, or no, sorry. Will playing Sea of Thieves on PlayStation 5 require Xbox Live or PlayStation Plus? PlayStation players will need a PS Plus subscription to engage in multiplayer gameplay. But even without an active subscription, you can still sail solo in Safer Seas mode. PlayStation players won't be required to purchase an Xbox Game Pass subscription when playing on a PlayStation 5. Seemed like that was kind of like a no-brainer, but you know, you never know with these things, so it's good to find out. While playing solo in Safer Seas does not require a live subscription, this is not an offline mode as it is still connected to servers hosted in the cloud. Safer Seas can usually be played with a crew, but playing without a, subs a live subscription only enables solo play. Joining other player sessions or inviting them to your own is not possible while playing the game in this way. Also, Safer Seas mode still allows access to the vast majority of content in the game, including the all story-driven Tall Tales, which is great that's about 30 hours worth of content for you actually it's probably more than that by now um the original ones were about 30 hours 
they've probably tacked on to that probably another, mm, I don't know, I'd, I'd probably say at least another 30 hours worth of, of content in the other ones. Like the original nine was about 30 um, if you went through it naturally. And uh, the, I would say like the uh, the Heart of Fire stuff, uh, the Pirate's Life and the Monkey Island, that's probably at least another good 30 hours. There's probably a good 60 hours worth of just tall tales you could do solo uh, without having to purchase a, um, a live subscription uh, service. Uh, notable exceptions are PvP focused elements such as the Reaper's Bones, which is a faction and faction battles, which is kind of like a head to head solo uh, or, or a head to head uh, ship, one ship versus another ship, uh, same type of ship. Um, as well as the Athena's Fortune Trading Company uh, and world events such as the Fort of the Damned and Fort of Fortune. So Athena Fortune or Athena's Fortune is kind of like the end game for Pirate Legends. You have to become a Pirate Legend to be able to gain access to the Athena's Fortune Trading Company to be able to purchase anything or interact with them. Uh, it also gives you a special place to go in the game once you do the, you hit that. Uh, the way you hit that is by hitting level 50 in three trading companies that are not the Athena's fortune. doesn't matter which three they are, uh, but you do have to hit 50 in at least three of those. Um, they did have a link in here talking more about Sea of Thieves, not, uh, Safer Seas, I'm not going to go into that. Um, will there be PlayStation-only servers? Now, this is a pretty interesting one because we do have Xbox-only servers. Um, this was created is as a way to try and segregate the console players on uh, uh, controller from the PC players for folks who felt like there was an unfair advantage. Um, there is an unfair advantage, to be perfectly honest. Having a mouse and keyboard does offer a lot more functionality than what a controller can do just due to the number of buttons and hotkeys that are available to PC players versus controllers. Um, not to say that skill can't bridge that gap because it most certainly can. And if you, you know, if you go back to like Halo, uh, controller was very preferred and uh, it still is in, in a lot of different esports. But most people would probably agree with me that having mouse and keyboard is uh, superior to an extent. It won't be it won't be the be all and all for everything, but it does offer a nice uh, boost in the way like I can I can spam uh, three or four buttons and quickly access items that I naturally would have to either map to a specific controller button, which is tough because there's only a limited number there and you can't rebind any back paddles to um, new types of buttons. You can remap uh, previous buttons, but you can't make new buttons out of those, which again, I actually really don't know why that's the case. A little tangent here. Honestly, the fact that back paddles on controllers or back buttons on controllers can't be generated as new buttons and programmed as additional buttons because you could have like another four buttons or you know if you build a shift functionality you could have another eight buttons uh in there the fact that that is not a thing drives me mad because it's so easy to to be able to set this up the software is already built into the hardware just let us do that xbox and playstation now that i think about it both of you all, it's it's ridiculous. Um, I forgot where I was when we were talking about this. Oh, mouse and keyboard support. That's right, going back. All right, we're rolling it back. Servers. So pirates playing on PlayStation can deactivate cross play functionality, thereby restricting their gaming sessions to exclusively include other PlayStation users. Players will also have the option to confine gameplay to fellow controller users, enabling play between both PlayStation and Xbox players who favor controller-based gameplay. So this is kind of an awesome way to uh, really kind of address like how do you deal with cross-play. So not only are PlayStation users going to be able to have um, multiple options, the options are only PlayStation users or only controller-based users or a mix of all. And the way that that's going to help uh, with a lot of folks who are struggling um, with uh, the game, the, the, the PlayStation ecosystem, their, their platform generally has more players as a console than say Xbox. So they will have a fair amount. And if you are on PlayStation, fan and you're planning on picking this up you might be worried about well what about the uh the server capacity how is how does that get worked out uh when you're looking at dwindling numbers on playstation well the nice thing is is that servers currently are capped at five ships which means you can have at max five galleons or 20 players per server no wait 
Yeah, that's that's right math, right? Yeah, because 16, 4 and 4 is 16, 4 and 5 is 20, 4 and 6 is 24. Okay, um, I did multiplication one day. Uh, so yes, currently servers are 5 galleons at max, which means that at any given time, if there are fewer than that and everything's working, you should get merged over naturally to another server. Now, unfortunately, there's a lot of ways that you can do that already. Uh, both with uh, voyages as well as PvP, or just going through uh, tall tail portals. There's lots of options. You can even scuttle your ship and transfer to a new server if you're being harassed and you're not happy with it. Um, but there's lots of ways to transfer servers, especially if your server feels like it's dead and you're either looking for more excitement or it's too spicy and you're looking for something a little more low key. All servers seem to have a bit of a, uh, a flavor to them. And each one is going to either be pretty spicy or not spicy at all. Or most of the time, I would say they're kind of somewhere in the middle. A little bit of spice, not too much. You can still have it and not have to worry about drinking like a, a glass of milk afterwards. As I look at the glass of milk taunting me, waiting for me to dunk some Oreos in there. Um, sorry again that you guys don't get the Oreo sales. That was a, that was a, that was a really nice thing that we had to do. Uh, weird workaround like we always do with cosmetics because regulations in different countries or whatever there's always some weird promotion going on that will jump through hoops to be able to get cosmetics and this is one of those few times that we can't because sony um but uh where was i <laughs> I forgot where I was servers being able to merge servers so you'll be able to have your own servers you'll be able to have servers that are just for controller users or you can just play who with who whomever you want and not have to worry about the ugliness that is ugh, just playstation users ugh, just controller users i like to be eclectic in my play style and welcome all forms of gamer to our servers we will sink and take your loot all it does not matter the more the merrier it just lets you learn how to fight against uh, the best of the best or the worst of the worst. Um, but you'll have options. And I think that's that to me at the end of the day is that's the big thing. I care more about options than anything else, honestly. Um, all right. Next uh, question. If someone has purchased a digital version of the game that allows them to play um, to both Xbox and PC, will it allow also allow them to play on PlayStation 5? Uh, this is talking about Play Anywhere. So um, to embark on adventures in Sea of Thieves on PlayStation 5, players will need to obtain one of the editions of the game, standard, deluxe, or premium, available from the PlayStation Store. Xbox Play Anywhere remains solely available through Xbox and the Windows Store. Very key that people know about this because that was something that um, I, I'd seen around. People were not sure be, because of Play Anywhere if they'd be able to get a license through uh, PlayStation. Unfortunately, when um, beta tests were going out for the Steam client, uh, I don't think Rare thought about this, but the beta client was just named Sea of Thieves. And uh, they gave everyone a, a code to be able to get the Steam client beta access to be able to test the game through Steam's store. When the game came live, um, it didn't really seem like they knew how to transition people from the demo or from the, the beta because it was effectively just the full game. So everyone that participated in the beta on the Steam client just got it. They just, they just got the game for free. Um, this is not the case on PlayStation, unfortunately. You will have to actually buy uh, the, the standard, deluxe, or premium version. Currently, those are ranging between 40 and 60 American dollars. Um, I don't know what they are in, uh, in, in yen. My apologies. Or whatever the Canadian dollar is. But I'm willing to bet it's probably like 70 bucks to 100. Uh, where were we going with that? Okay, so yes. Unfortunately, Xbox Play Anywhere, as in the name, suggests that it only plays anywhere on Xbox. Uh, with the introduction of a larger player pool, will we see six ships on a server again? This, this feels like it's more keyed into the people that know what that even means which is the Xbox and PC player. So the team are currently exploring the return of six ship servers and will update players accordingly. I would not hold my breath on this. Um, the game is in a bit of a state right now. Uh, there have been numerous crashes that I've seen anecdotally from friends in the community. Um, it does not seem to be anything that I've seen streamers really 
uh, harp on about. I don't know if that's just, you know, happenstance. It's it's all kind of an- anecdotal. We don't really have like a, a, a crash percentage for the client. Um, but I have seen and struggled with this uh, myself in other ways. Um, so hopefully this won't be something that really plagues people and they they can start to work back up to that six ship servers because that's generally when things get the uh, most interesting. How will the influx of players affect server stability? <laughs> uh, the team are ready to welcome new PlayStation players to the seas and our live service capabilities have been scaled in preparation for launch. Um, I mm, don't know if I really have anything to say about this because I don't know if anything I have to say about this is positive, but I hope that they have. Um, they've been through a couple launches now and uh, I would imagine that they probably have a decent idea on what this is going to look like, especially given the history that we've seen with community weekends and community days. They most definitely know that um, they can they can have like a pretty heavy server capacity uh, from time to time. So trying to make sure that they're taking that into account is appreciated. Next question, uh, are there plans to prioritize bugs ahead of the launch? The team have been prioritizing quality of life improvements during our monthly updates in the run-up to the launch of PlayStation 5. We continue to maintain our unwavering commitment to the health and longevity of the game. That is a true statement. That is uh, 100% factual. They are. They are very much committed to it. They definitely struggle with it, and I think that a lot of uh, play. Uh, I think a lot of PlayStation users will have to kind of acknowledge and, and, and recognize that the game as a live service uh the team themselves probably roughly somewhere between mm, i'd say like two to four hundred employees depending on if you're taking into account uh the the little side studios that they have working on the game as well but they're not Fortnite. they're not bungie um they they do not have a huge team with masses uh with a, a mass of people just ready and waiting to kind of knock out any tiny little bug and uh and and at that point you just kind of have to think like okay um if this is a game that is going to not be 100 percent solid all the time i might want to consider reaching out to other people and getting their thoughts their opinions before the game actually launches launches and you you get locked into that purchase right so just do some some due diligence on there. I want to make sure that you're happy with the purchase. Next question. How will the PS5 version of Sea of Thieves work with the PlayStation 5 DualSense controllers? Well, it's a wild controller. Definitely one of the best ones out there. I have thoughts on uh, whether or not it's the best. I think there's things that I like about it more than uh, Xbox, but definitely things that I dislike more about it than Xbox as well, too. So here's the answer. Sea of Thieves support the PlayStation 5 DualSense controller, including several of its unique features. Haptics. Sea of Thieves uses the haptic feedback technology within the DualSense controller to enhance the experience of movement and interacting with the world. I really like the haptics with the the DualSense, I'm not going to lie. Adaptive triggers. Sea of Thieves uses the adaptive triggers with the DualSense controller to heighten game gunplay, allowing players to feel each pull of the trigger. Now, let me just sit back here for a, a little bit and just kind of take this in for a moment. Um, adaptive triggers, in my experience, have been very hit and miss. There's only a few games out there that really do adaptive triggers well. Uh, most of the time, I end up turning off adaptive triggers because as cool of a feature as it is, uh, when I am trying to pull the trigger, it is usually because I'm trying to kill something. And if I'm killing something, I generally want the least amount of resistance in killing that thing because it's most likely going to be a scenario where that thing kills me or I kill that thing. And the easier it is to kill that thing, it will probably be likely that I survive not getting killed by that thing. So when it comes to triggers, uh, when there is resistance, I usually turn that off. And mostly because the uh, sensitivity for that is is not well built um not on the controller hardware aspect of it but the developers typically do not build the um software around it to really be something that you can tweak and play around with if they did that most likely uh the the adaptive trigger feature itself 
would be good enough that you shouldn't have to because they invested time in it. Um, it feels like this might be just kind of a quick little plug-in that they do um, to be able to take access and then set a point of resistance to be able to have to push through to click the trigger. Um, I do not like that. Sea of Thieves has a very small health pool. Um, you can get one shot with a weapon. You can get two shot with two other weapons and the third uh, current weapon takes four swings of your sword to be able to kill someone. So that on top of the types of food that we have in the game to restore health, it is very easy for people to eat through damage, uh, which means that the time time to kill can be tricky. Um, and the last thing that I want to have to think about is how hard I'm pulling a trigger when I'm trying to kill someone. Um, that is not the thing that I want to think about. I want to think about how quickly they will be dead so I can go back to triaging my ship which is probably taking some damage as that's why I probably have uh, someone on my ship or vice versa where you're on another person's ship and you're trying to lock that ship down. You're trying to ensure that you can get people dead so they can go to the ferry and you have more time to let that ship sink. Uh, the next one is built-in microphone and speaker. Sea of Thieves uses the built-in microphone so players can chat with their friends without the, needed, uh, the need for a connected headset. In my experience, this is not a great microphone. It's not really a decent microphone. It is, however, a microphone. And there is, however, a speaker. And if you want to use those, you can. I would not recommend succumbing anyone to that because there's not really a noise gate on it. There's no mic muting. There's no mic monitoring. Um, and if any of those make sense to you, Congratulations, you've done a little bit of uh, due diligence when it comes to audio. But I do not see this uh, being something that many PlayStation users use on a regular basis, unless you're in a lobby for Call of Duty, in which case the dude who's probably very stoned uh, has decided that he accidentally hit the button or uh, most likely someone has like flubbed it and accidentally hit it. They don't even know it's on and you're just hearing that little in the background every like 30 seconds because they're too lazy to replace the batteries in their smoke alarm and it's driving you insane when all you want to do is just try and and get this map finished so that you can get some more battle pass progress i have not ever dealt with this in my entire life of gaming next question will there be a version of sea of thieves compatible with the psvr2 uh, as someone who is foolishly buying into the PSVR 2 thinking that Sony was actually going to support that hardware. Uh, no, the team have no current plans to integrate PSVR 2 and rightly so it's dead hardware, unfortunately, um, not officially, but I would argue that it is most definitely dead hardware. So no reason to really like justify that you can already already get, um, Oh, I don't know where that yawn came from. I'm wide awake. I don't know. I'm not sure what that, what that was all about. Sorry. Uh, I'm not sure um, if you know this, but you can actually get Sea of Thieves on VR uh, through other other fashions. Um, in fact, I think uh, I think um, well, no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna f force anyone to go look someone up on a on Twitter just to bug them about it. Um, but yeah, th there's tools out there to be able to allow that. And next question, what do we got here? Will Sea of Thieves work on the PlayStation Portal? Yes. If you know what a PlayStation Portal is, you should already know this answer. And if you don't, PlayStation Portal is effectively a, um, it's like a handheld streaming device. Something I think a lot of folks can relate to. Uh, just imagine like your phone with a little controller on each side of it, um, designated for just the PlayStation. And then realize that the money that you spent on that was probably really, really high as well too. Um, not to say that it's a bad thing, uh, but it is just a little too pricey for anything that I want to do. I'd much rather get a Logitech G Cloud on sale for like 250 and be able to access both PlayStation and Xbox and Steam uh, content from one device. Will the PS5 version have a performance mode that allows 120 FPS? This is something that is available on, on uh, Xbox. Sea of Thieves on PlayStation 5 is optimized to run at 60 frames per second in 4K resolution with an additional performance mode available for supported TVs, allowing for 120 Hertz refresh rates at 1080 resolution. This is part pair, or this has parity with the Xbox Series X experience. Now, what I want to, to say about this, 1080p still looks fine 
on a 4K screen when it comes to Sea of Thieves. The graphic style allows you to have a little bit of that fuzz that still makes the game looks really good. There is nothing more beautiful than that sweet, sweet, buttery smooth 120 FPS. It's amazing. And uh, if you get a chance to see that in Sea of Thieves, looks good looks really good will there be a version of the insider program available for playstation players yes log into the sea of Thieves website and you'll find more details added to the insider program hub as when they become uh, available um so if you don't know the insider program that is the uh the nda or, or non-disclosure agreement that you have to agree to which is not discussing the game hence non-disclosure agreement that you sign for uh for for rare saying that you will not talk about anything in the insider program outside of the insider program that's why it's called the insider program i'm not trying to talk down to you i'm just trying to get the 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 obvious out of the way um this is a program that rewards people up to a certain number of weeks every no every week that you uh play the game and put one hour into the actual insider program you get um either currencies or uh cosmetics um little things that you can put on your game in the main game outside of the insider program and uh if, if you're interested in it just treat it like fight club that's that's my best recommendation. Which trophies will be available? And if I've already unlocked trophies via existing platforms, which would be achievements, will I still be able to quote unquote platinum Sea of Thieves on PlayStation 5? Will trophies auto unlock if I previously met the criteria? This is a good question, actually. All active Sea of Thieves achievements on Xbox and Steam will convert into trophies on PS5. While existing achievement progress may result in some trophies unlocking immediately upon login, players will need to replay to fully unlock trophies on PS5. I think what they're talking about here really does kind of come down to tall tales because they do have a bit of a struggle with that uh, at the moment. Both new and existing players can progress through the base trophy set of 60 trophies to achieve the new platinum trophy, Pirate Perfectionist. I'm going to be checking this out because I'm very curious about this. I don't have very many platinums on my uh, my PlayStation. And honestly, like Destiny 2 was an easy one because it auto popped. And uh, I think Sea of Thieves is going to be another one. So it'd be kind of cool to have another platinum. I, I actually kind of like platinum trophies. I think they're cooler than, uh, than uh, what do they call it? Um, achievements. I, I think achievement points is weird. It doesn't really, it doesn't really translate into anything special because you can get them just about anywhere. Um, or for doing... I don't know. I'm not going to get into that debate. Additionally, although more trophies will be added over time, similar to achievements... Only the initial base set of trophies at launch will contribute towards unlocking the platinum title. That just kind of helps ensure uh, that you can get that even if they add more later on without having to worry about um, when stuff was available. If I choose or if I participate in the closed beta, will my progress carry over to launch? <laughs> I actually know the answer to this. Participants in the closed beta will be able to earn renown currency and cosmetic rewards as part of the season 11 seasonal progress track their pirates will keep these rewards and these items will be accessible when the game launches globally at the end of april they will be also rewarded with 10 levels of renown towards their season 12 seasonal progress track as a thank you for participating um, if you're a playstation user you're not too familiar the uh the the um, renown is the experience that you earn in each season pass it is a level whenever you earn a level of renown you unlock uh some cosmetics the free version of the uh the plunder pass or the season passes they 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 uh they call it the plunder pass is genuine really kind of honestly very generous um you get a lot of cosmetics for free um, it's completely free for the free tier. It's not like things are locked out of it. The Plunder Pass is uh, $10 in, in America. Um, you can purchase that to get the cosmetics that are specific to the Plunder Pass. 
Um, you do not get any kind of experience bonuses if you purchase the plunder pass towards the free pass. Um, there's no like multipliers really. And genuinely like just playing the game, you will eventually get the season pass without having to worry about uh, the trials or the deeds or anything that is really kind of particular that you can do to get, you know, like additional renown um, and experience that way. But if you're just playing the game on a regular basis uh, over the course of three months, you will probably run into that level 100 uh, without really like having too many issues. It's It's fairly easy to work through these. The closed beta participants will not be able to engage with the Pirate Emporium and will only be playing with other PlayStation players during this period. It's a server test. While trophies will all will be disabled during the closed beta, progress towards them will be tracked, carried over, and unlocked appropriately upon launch of the retail version. So that kind of makes sense. Um, I imagine that they're probably looking to remove people who have played it on xbox um to be able to just log into the beta with the pre-order get the platinum and then cancel the pre-order that's if i'm if i'm if the uh the cynical logan is is looking at this that's what i would say is probably the reason for it honestly i think it ties a lot deeper into when the game is actually technically available for purchase um as far as like a, a live game um but i i don't know the details and that no one's ever gonna like reveal like what what's going on with there so we'll just have to kind of make make guesses and assumptions so and that's it that was it guys we made it through we made it through the faq um i'm very happy to hear that they've they've been able to actually release a lot of this information both prior to the actual uh beta launch which is going on next week i'm trying to think when that's actually going to be happening um let me see if i can look that up real quick hold please Oh yeah, I was right. Okay, so it launches on April 12th, uh, which is convenient because I'm going to have a lot of free time. So I will probably be spending some time that weekend actually doing that uh, outside of going to, to no, never mind. Um, so yeah, April 12th is when that is going to be going on. Um, nice that they came out with this uh, about a week before so that folks can have an opportunity to kind of like understand what's going on address the fact that um, cosmetics are not going to be transferable between platforms uh, for the the pre-order and the uh, beta access. Uh, it's a shame that this information wasn't made available back in February. I think a lot of people would probably have been a lot more um, excited for the PS5 launch on the Xbox side, uh, having not had to eat this, uh, to, you know, take this pill. Um, but I think for those that are genuinely, you know, PlayStation 5 fans, this is going to be really awesome for them. Um, you're not going to really see much of a difference between the Xbox and the PlayStation versions. Um, so you'll be able to just kind of go in and enjoy the game the way everyone else does. Uh, and I, I like that because that's at the, at the end of the day, I think everyone's goal is just to kind of get more people interested in Sea of Thieves. Um, I hate that the video or that the image that they're using on this news site shows like a bunch of pirates kind of hanging out at Port Merrick with like a little fox running around and stuff because that doesn't happen. <laughs> like we, <laughs> it just reminds me that we don't have NPCs in towns. Why don't we have NPCs in towns that just wander around? It's all I want. They won't give it to me. Maybe for my birthday. Hey, by the way, birthdays in the beginning of July, um, rare. If, uh, <laughs> you know, you wanted to get me something, you just put some NPCs walking around doing stupid stuff in towns. That'd be cool. You know, how, how, how much resources that take, you know, just keep, keep it at five ships, you know, put some NPCs walking. Yeah. No. All right. What? Fine. Fine. You know what? I didn't want them anyway. God, the nerve. Um, we are getting owls, which is kind of cool though. So glad to see that. Um, I have not gotten a chance to really play Sea of Thieves, unfortunately. Uh, personal life really is kind of getting in the way of being able to play anything. I am trying to think of the last time I did play a game. When was the last time that I played something? Oh no, it was uh, Friday. Yeah, Friday. Man, I actually don't think I played anything yesterday, which is weird for me. Yeah. Anyway, 
that's going to do it for this episode. Um, I hope you guys all have a fantastic rest of your week. If you're jumping into the beta, keep an eye out for me. Um, I will probably be sailing around um, looking for folks and seeing like what the experience is like. Um, if anything, I think it'll be uh, really kind of interesting to see people playing the game who either know everything about the game and know exactly what to do. And it's going to be bloodshed everywhere. Or there's just going to be people like with their boats sailing off as they jump onto an island thinking, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of anchor drops it's going to be fantastic you're going to see sails down and anchored ships at islands for that beta and it's going to be glorious and i can't wait because it's so much fun to see new people try and figure out this game there's so much that i think um that i think people need to be able to check out and actually i'll tell you what um uh here's your here's your first tip for PlayStation fans going into the beta, uh, there is a, an accessibility feature that you should really turn on when you start the game up, and it's called Reduced Hold to Interact. And originally, this was introduced as an accessibility option. This has become one of the biggest boons in terms of settings that you can turn on. Most interactions in the game require you to hold down the appropriate button till the time in the little, com little completed circle thing fills up. With reduce to interact uh, or reduce hold to interact, you will only need to press the button once to begin that process. You still need to you, you still need to visibly be pointed at the location of where that button interact is. Uh, like if it's repairing or picking up an item, you still need to really be like you have to actually be in in visibility range of that or looking at it to be able to do that. Um, but you don't have to actually hold the button down. Um, this is something that I think so many Sea of Thieves players right now take for granted that we just, it, it's not even a, it's not even a thought. We just hit the button and it does its thing. We never remember the fact that this was actually an option that originally we had to hold down the button. It was such, it was such a wonderful breath of fresh air when we're like, oh, I don't have to hold it down. I just press the button. So yeah, that's going to be the first thing I recommend you guys actually like turn on. There's a few other uh, hints that I want to give in the coming month um, with each episode to make sure that you guys have a little bit of nugget of, of fun stuff to kind of think about as you're going into into launch um, but yes the first one definitely go into the settings find the setting that says reduce hold to interact it will change your life and if it doesn't you already had a good life so live with that pirates that's going to do it for this episode if you guys have any questions comments concerns feel free to reach out to me either through the discord uh i have a keel hall discord the the link is in the show notes um you can also reach out to me on twitter or threads at c-a-p-t underscore l-o-g-u-n there is technically an email for the show at c-a-p-t l-o-g-u-n at gmail.com not really anyone really uses that um, and if you like this content, definitely go back, check out some other stuff. If you're fresh coming to PlayStation, um, I definitely hope that you are prepared for the PvPvE madness that is Sea of Thieves. It's a fantastic game, and I hope you all enjoy it. And with that, I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. So, Pirates, thank you. I love you. And I look forward to sailing with you on the Sea of Thieves. <laughs>